Today we're going to talk about leadership in politics and leadership on boards. Monsieur Raymond Loretan, who was Swiss ambassador in New York and Singapore. He was also very active politically and is on numerous boards, both for public institutions and private companies. Welcome, Monsieur Raymond Loretan. Tell us, if you were to describe yourself in two minutes or less, what would you say? Well, basically, I'm a diplomat by training. Uh, we, who went out of his comfort zone into politics, into economy. And today, I would say I'm an, I have an holistic approach of life. You've been on numerous boards as a member of the board and as president. What are some of the competencies you need as member of the board and as president of the board? As member of the board, you need to be independent, to have your own opinion, to be able to listen, to be able to defend your point. Even if you feel that uh, the majority is against you, and to keep in mind that you're representing not only majority shareholders, but sometimes small minority uh, shareholders. As president of the board, you must be able even to listen more, to offer a platform of expression to all board members, to be able to summarize and to decide. In other words, to lead. Summarize, decide, make sure everyone contributes and uh, represent even the minorities. Yes, uh, not only contributes, but to take into consideration the opinion of other people. Because a board if, uh, is the composition of different uh, competencies. And the point of view, the different point of view with the different experiences are very important. And you have to keep, a board is a team, is a, is a composition of different point of views with different experiences. And I think there is, for each board member, if you choose this well, uh, there is an added value. But as a board uh, chairman, you also have to keep this balance between the interest of uh, the shareholders through the board members and uh, of the long-term vision of the company, including the opinion of the um, senior management, which is sometimes not the same than uh, some short-term interest of uh, shareholders for example. So sometimes you're a mediator and a negotiator between two parties? Yes, you're a facilitator, you're a negotiator, but then you have to decide. You have really to lead the way to show and, and to come down to a decision. So who or what influenced you most in your career? Well, every, in every step of my career, I try to take an influence, sometimes as a as a president or as a leader, sometimes behind the scene. And uh, you have to see in this world uh, what, what is happening behind the scene is sometimes as important as uh, what you can see in the medias. Uh, one of the persons who had the largest influence on me was the former Secretary of State, uh, Swiss Secretary of State, Edouard Brunner, who told me, um, uh, the most important thing in life is uh, to agree on your arrière-pensée, you say, in uh, French, in your second thoughts. Mm. Agreement between second thoughts is very important. I see. So it would be in alignment with what you think inside and outside, is that right? Yes, and with long-term vision and to align the interest, to find common interest. Then when uh, your individual interest is also the common interest, you're on the right way. So this reminds me that you've been a politician as well, an ambassador for the Swiss government in New York and Singapore. How has that international experience influenced you as a leader? Well, the international experience uh, is very important in the sense that it gives you a global view of, uh, of life, of, uh, of business. First of all, it keeps you aware that uh, in the world there are different uh, approaches to values, uh, that what you think in Europe is not uh, right in other parts of, of the world, that there is uh, different uh, viewpoints, 
And secondly, it gives you also the ability to take uh, and to negotiate with uh, rep people with other mentalities, and which is, I think, very important. And to try to find a common ground and a common interest with people coming uh, from different uh, backgrounds. And I think, as Swiss, we are privileged in the sense that uh, we have different min minorities here in the country, and uh, we are used to, to work on, on common goals and compromise and re respect of minorities and it works the same in the world. And to have an experience in other culture, like in the Asian culture or in the American culture, is very interesting. So this reminds me too that you were president of the Swiss Broadcasting Corporation, uh, president of the board. Tell us a little bit about how this experience helped you in that situation. Where is you see the media going in the future? Well, first of all, uh, public broadcasting in Switzerland has a special place because uh, it keeps or it helps to keep the, the national cohesion, to keep together a country with four different languages, uh, three different identities. Uh, um, when you look at Switzerland, you think it's a success story and everything is coming easily, but it's not true. We have to really work on it and to find compromise. And the public broadcasting helps to keep this culture uh, together. But it's also confronted today with the globalization of, uh, of medias, uh, social medias, the Googles, the Apple, the Amazon of this world. Mm -hmm. So you really have to transform your, your uh, broadcasting, your classic broadcasting in a numeric uh, society, which is uh, not society, company, which is uh, collaborating with other private actors in the broadcasting field in Switzerland, for example, with the private uh, radio and, uh, and TV, but also with the publishers. And there is still a, here in Switzerland a tension between uh, public broadcasting and publisher because we are competitor now on the net. And here we have to, yes, we have to invent a dialogue which uh, gives you a win-win approach of the public service. So one final question is, you're also a Swiss politician. Tell us a little bit some of the challenges you foresee for Switzerland. Well, uh, you know, Switzerland uh, is a successful story, but a large part of this success is due to what foreigners uh, brought us. Uh, we have a very large economy, much larger than the country, and in order to make it operational, we need the foreign sources and foreign resources. And I think the big challenge for Switzerland is, is to, to, to keep open to these foreign resources and we have the immediate challenge to, to find a solution in the free movement of person with the European Union. This has to come to a solution within the next uh, month and I really hope and uh, we have to work on it that uh, Switzerland will be able to find a satisfactory solution to this, to this big challenge. One last tip for the bright young leaders. Well, uh, start to be leader of yourself. Uh, you have to know what you want, uh, have the courage to take risk and to go out of your comfort zone. Thank you very much, Monsieur Hemoloreto. Thank you. Thank you.